Today is the day we finally get to the oil pan gasket. It was one of the very first gaskets I ordered from Gino's Garage. And uh, I've been kind of avoiding it. Mainly because it's sitting on the oil pan. So in order for me to make this work, I'm going to have to lift up with the cherry picker. And then, after that, I get the oil pan out, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna support it. So, I've already gone ahead and taken out all the bolts. And I went ahead and marked right here and right here. That's where the specialty bolts were at. Those were the ones I'm guessing that held the uh, transmission cooler lines. So I marked those and I know where they gotta go back, but they're all off. I thought this guy right here, the, the ones inside were gonna be tough to do, but it wasn't that bad, mainly because I left them loose whenever I did the uh, rear main seal. I had to take those off, so I kept them loose. I didn't play around with that uh, gasket part. You might recall seeing it in a prior video, but uh, we're gonna get started. I gotta lift it up. I gotta get the oil pan off, and then I need to figure out how I'm gonna stage it because I know that my cherry picker has a tendency to drift. So, uh, well, let's get rolling. I was really kind of hoping it just kind of fall out. There she is, in all her greasy glory. I'm pretty sure I did that dent. But yeah, if you see right here, that's where the majority of the uh, oil is built up, there towards the back. I think that's where it was leaking the most. You know, you ain't got too much over here. You got a little, little wet spots over here. But yeah, I think I'm going to be spending the majority of the night scraping all the grease off and uh, throwing on some paint. So I got my block situation down. And it's just kind of resting on the, the, the corner there. I still have the cherry picker hooked up, but uh, I don't think it's going to be going anywhere. Unfortunately, a large majority of the gasket stayed on the block side so uh, I'm gonna be spending a lot of time under here scraping this thing off probably use the wire wheel probably uh, spray it down with some uh, brake clean after I'm all done but uh, if you're wondering what the uh, underside of your Cummins looks like with the oil pan off this is it so your oil pickup comes all the way over here to the front of the engine and that's where it uh, gets filtered into your um, oil filter. So I'm gonna be doing some cleaning all nice and shiny but you can tell all these little little marks right here that's from whenever I wiped it off with just one of these, uh, these shop rags so if you ever read anything or know anything about painting, they always say to use a lint-free cloth, and well, this is why. But I think it'll be okay. I ended up uh, shaving all the uh, paint off with uh, this guy right here, I'm using one of these pads. And, uh, it scratched it up a little bit. You can kind of see it right there, but uh, it's good. I I ended up having to use the same thing for taking off the gasket. Ah. I got it all wiped out. Looks like there was still a little 
oil left in there that I'm going to have to clean off. But uh, I had to grind it off using, a, like I said, one of these guys. That gasket was uh, petrified, I think is the best word for it. I got my bolts all cleaned up. We got the bottom of the block all cleaned up here. I had to use that die grinder with that sanding pad to get off that nasty old gasket. And uh, as you can see right there, it, uh, it sprayed fuzzies all over the place. So I had to spend some time and clean out the underside of the block. It got all over the, the crank and the pistons and everything like that. And so I took a can of uh, brake clean and sprayed it all out. Tried to get out the best I could. I have a few more spots I need to hit. Like the... Yeah, there's just a little bit more. I really hope it doesn't doesn't end up biting me in the end, but I'll I'll clean it out as best I can one more time, make sure it's all gone. For the dipstick, I'm gonna go with one of these little chrome jobbers that I picked up from the auto parts store. It's actually a dipstick for a small block Ford. I knew I didn't want to use the big long guy because the engine is going to sit so much lower now. So it came with this little collar and a much shorter dipstick. And so I took a couple measurements. Let's see, I kind of made up my marks right there. And then I punched it. But I think I'm going to wait before I make any more markings until I actually fill the truck up with the oil for the first time. I mean the engine. Engine, I mean. It's not an exact fit, but here, let me show you. There's going to be a pretty tight clearance right there. So, there we go. That guy slides in there like that. And it actually sits in a little bit further. I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of uh, use some RTV sealant. Uh, probably the gear oil type. I'm going to go ahead and put some at the very end and then kind of punch this guy down as far as I can. It's not an exact fit and if this is the most, uh, I don't know, what would you say, like roadkill style way of doing this with this engine, then I'm okay with it. We'll just see how well it works. Alright, my new dipstick is installed. Got a nice little goober of uh, RTV that I went ahead and put on before I uh, inserted the, uh, the tube and then uh, went ahead and hammered it in. I got a little bit of cardboard because it was rubbing up against the starter a little bit whenever I was test fitting it. So I uh, wedged that in there kind of to uh, make sure it gives a nice uh, gap for the starter. I know the light's really bad, but if we look close enough here, we can kind of see where the the full mark is on this guy and the uh, the add mark. That's pretty easy to see. And if we kind of compare them to the pickup tube, so that's the add mark, and it's about right there with the seam of the pickup tube. So I'm going to have to make some new marks. What I'm going to do is uh, when I put oil in this guy for the first time I'll, uh, I'll make sure I look up the exact amount of oil that's supposed to go in. It's When I fill up my truck with oil and it's a 24 valve it uses about two and a half gallons but I'll, I'll double check and make sure what it is I'll fill up the oil into the truck and then um, I'll check my level and then I'll, I'll, I'll put my mark then because uh, I just want to make sure it's, uh, it's right. So for my oil pan gasket I'm going to be using a Cummins brand gasket 
and that's the part number right there, the 4337616. So we'll be using that guy. It looks like a multi-piece gasket, so I'm going to be doing a little bit of arts and crafts to get this guy apart, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. I really should have tested these first before uh, putting on all the silicone, but oh well. Now it said to do a 4 millimeter thick bead of silicone in the instructions. I don't know what four millimeters looks like, and I didn't see the uh, option on the little tube when I was trimming it up, so we kind of got what we got. All right, we'll go ahead and put a bit of silicone on this, on top of this. And uh, we'll get started. Okay, I got everything cleaned off the underside, and then they said to go ahead and uh, to go ahead and put a little extra silicone right there where the front cover and the rear meet up. So I went ahead and put a little extra silicone down there. I uh, I wiped it off one more time just to make sure. Replacing the uh, the the old gasket fuzz with the uh, the the lint the heavily linted cloth that I've been using as a shop rag. So uh, I think what I'll go ahead and do is whenever we get this running, I'll run it for a little while and then um, I'll change the oil real quick and maybe even take the filter apart and dissect that.
when putting these guys in, make sure you uh, you don't forget your little washer there. So many bolts. Well, for the most part, they've all started really easy. Now I just gotta do the ones in the back. That's gonna kinda suck. Now I was told when you tighten these up, to start in the middle and then work your way out. So that's what we're gonna do. And as soon as we're done tightening these up, we're going to torque them down to 18 foot pounds. All torqued down. We're good to go. Don't forget your specialty bolts here. The ones that uh, I think hold your transmission lines, your cooling lines. Those are actually a 13 millimeter, but the rest of these are 10 mils and they are torqued down to 18 foot pounds. So one around, you start off on the inside and you work your way out. And then, uh, you know, just I just did a couple laps around just to make sure everything was nice and tight. So that job is done. Okay, for anybody that wanted to know, the part number for that dipstick for the Ford is a 6920. And uh, it's still drying right there.